BD5 Pilot with you out at the Hillsboro Hangar on a Sunday, and you might ask, what the hell? What are these goofy glasses I've got on? Well, let me show you what I'm working on, why I need to wear these. So I've got J1 wired and pinned for the uh, vertical power VPX box, but I'm working on J2, which is where all those little switches that uh, are up on my left and right console come up. And so what I've done so I've gone and labeled every one of these with the little pin numbers that they go into. And then getting those little pins, crimping those little pins on using that DMC tool with the, uh, the correct fitting. Let's see, does it say which fitting that is? It's the one I ordered that told that said that was the right one to use for these pins. And that, they are. They're really solid. They don't uh, come out easy. But uh, between using this little magnifying tool that's for soldering and those little glasses, I can see what I'm doing to get this little fine work done. And, uh, and you might ask yourself how to come up with all the scheme. Well, I took the schematic that was for wiring those uh, switches. And then I've, you can see I've handwritten in. The color coding that is uh, on those bundled wires, that five, uh, five bundle wire that runs up there. And those are all labeled as well. And then I put a little, put a little another piece of heat shrink to keep that, keep that together. So once I get the uh, switches wired up for, uh, there's, a, there's a little nine pin connector that uh, makes, gives a quick disconnect up there at the panel. And unfortunately, uh, Pacific Coast, uh, gave me a set of male that's one type and a set of female that's an actual different type. They don't fit together. So uh, I've got to go back and uh, exchange those, get the correct uh, correct parts. I want the AMP uh, uh, CPC type nine pin unit. And that uh, that's a nice uh, what It uses these same pins, by the way. So we're in the process of wiring up J2. I should be done with that shortly. Okay, all those pins are in place, or at least I believe all those pins are in place. Next step is to take this little guy. Now you've got to hold the angle just right and you can see the numbers and this is going to be one is going to be on the upper right corner there and then work its way to the left. So it'll be in Hebrew. And so now I just look at the pin number, place the pin in the correct space and then I'll assemble that shell unit. You notice I got the other shell completed with the little silicone tape to protect the wire. So there now we have J2 completely pinned out. Now it's a matter of gathering those wires together, putting a little silicone wrap and then uh, putting that uh, back shell back on and uh, screwing it in so it protects those wires from uh, getting any stress on them that causes them to snap or break. And there now I have the uh, stress relief onto that back shell. I'll keep the lights out of that. And there's, you know, now I can snap the top on and finish screwing that together. And that's another completed back shell. Now the VPX uh, is all ready to plug in. So now I'll move on to the Garmin. Since I've got the VPX, there's J1, there's J2, there's J8 and then J10 and J12, all pinned, wired, ready to uh, ready to go to work, but uh, they won't work yet because they don't have everything else finished. And I've got to have the components as well as the switches all in, wired, grounded, to then produce, uh, introduce power to the system and put the programming in from the configuration. So I'm looking forward to showing you that. Now we're working on the uh, engine monitor setup. That's the GEA24. And you can see I've got the J244 back shell. There's actually only four wires going into that. But let me tell you, that took uh, every bit of my magnifying glass and light to figure out where those pins went. So now it's to assemble that uh, back shell, get that protected with that silicone tape, and uh, then we'll move on. Okay, so J244 is almost complete. I've got the silicone tape there, fusion tape. I've got the little stay uh, not too tightened down. 
so but it uh, keeps those wires from getting tension pulling on them and I'm about to put the cover on and we're done with that one we're on to the last of what I'm going to do with the, the GAA 24 right now it's only two of these that get uh, worked on right now the EGT and CHT all get taken care of after I uh, get the engine uh, put on and then figure those wire links out and then the tack output also goes into a separate uh, there's a total of four back shells on the uh, on this unit so there I have two of the uh, four back shells for the GEA 24 engine monitor assembled the other two have to uh, go on after I get the engine in the plane because those tie into the RPM the uh, exhaust gas temperature and the cylinder head temperature and those have to be wired on the plane because I don't want to have extra wire uh, coiled around on, on those units. So that'll that'll be fun. That'll probably be a little tight too. Next project is the comm radio, the GTR20. That comm radio includes an audio panel built into it. So all my headset, all my audio, as well as the CAN bus and the power, all get through that uh, mess of wires right there, as well as the mic and the push to talk. So I've got those, I think, evened out uh, lengthwise on the wires. Now I can uh, prepare them for putting the pins on. And thank you to David Newtile for giving me the uh, code for to, to try to use on some of these uh, connections. So uh, blue, orange, and white are going to be consistent throughout the aircraft. Now that does look like quite the porcupine mess there. So this is, uh, this is the comm radio. GTR 20. Those are all the pins that are going to deal with the uh, just the power itself, the CAN bus, the headset out for me, the mic out for me, the secondary headset uh, audio, which is going to deal with the uh, verb that I uh, install in the aircraft uh, so that I can record audio. And then uh, also there's the audio that comes up from the uh, G3X itself. I believe that covers everything, but that's a whole bunch of pins. As I say, I've got the wiring convention uh, figured out. I've handwritten it into the uh, schematic here. So thank you, David, for that. And we're going to get to work putting the pins into that uh, back shell. All right, I'm honestly finding it a little hard to believe. But uh, I got it. I got the uh, GTR20 all wired in. So we're ready to assemble. The rest of that that's a good feeling and there you go gtr20 now has its uh wiring complete and ready we just got to put this little cover on and screw that on and we're ready to move on to the transponder which uh, changes it goes to the micro pins so that's going to be a little different uh challenge for me so there i've got the pinning done for the GTX 45R transponder. And let me tell you, this has been the one I have hated the most. This has been a pain. These smaller uh, pins are harder to deal with. And, uh, and it's very difficult to read that. Uh, it does not have each pin numbered. It only has the ends numbered. So you have to count it. And fortunately, I've got that diagram from the manual that I can reference and really help along. So now I just got to assemble the rest of that uh, shell and then the, the transponder gets a pretty impressive back shell to it. And of course, now that I'm assembling that, which goes together as a unit, I really got to make sure that my direction that I put that in, see how the D shape there is for that larger in relation to the other. That's what has to match when I put that back together. And here's the parts I'm, I'm referencing is, is this, why I said it's an impressive back shell. This is designed so that that uh, transponder could slide in and out, but uh, not in the way it's installed into the, my aircraft. But <laughs> if it's installed in another aircraft, it might work. And there's the, I'm not going to use that set up there for that pin actually and not I'm not in my installation so i got to de decide whether i'm going to leave that partially in so debris doesn't get into there so that slides over and protects 
and then make sure the other part goes in right. And fortunately, this is shaped. See how it's shaped the right way? See, so it hopefully can't screw it up. So I'll go to work putting that together now. And there, fortunately, we have it. That went together. So there's what plugs the transponder in. So with that complete, other than uh, you know, crimping on the little uh, pieces for the shield drain that, uh, that screw on either this location or the other side has some, I'm, uh, I'm done with this area for the wiring harness. This, this area is actually pretty much ready to set into the plane and start hooking things up. Although it looks like I've got to go back and redo some of that. All right, I'm seeing a problem, so I'll go get it fixed. Okay, I've got that fixed. So with that, and basically with having this entire section ready to ready to plug and play, so I have this, uh, once I get that set in, I have this wire to feed through to the engine compartment. Though That goes to the two autopilot roll and uh, pitch. GSA 28 autopilot servos, and then there's a line that goes to the beacon. There's three wires to hook up for that. There's a whole group, and they're marked for the pinout that this goes to the PPS. That's the uh, takes the place of a solenoid for my starter and my alternator and for the uh, master switch itself. Um, these stay inside. These are bundled up because those get used later for the heater, for the backup power supply because I have to determine whether the power supply is going to go forward or back. Uh, this line is going to get eventually hooked up for the uh, RCA feed from the verb camera. This one uh, is going to feed the stereo audio to the verb so that's going to go in a little panel that I make for that purpose. This is the one that feeds out through the wing which still has a little little soldering work to do when I get to the end of that but uh, that, that's going to be when I get that together. And then I've got this end here the, the part that goes up in the cockpit area for uh, and four units get wired up the was GPS the g3 X itself there's an ad hard unit and there's the uh, g5 which is the, the attitude backup the ground is already set up on that and then my switches so I got to get with uh, Dewey on uh, Monday and make sure I get uh, I'll take these two bags back and say okay those Male and female need to be matching so that the, that will work. But uh, overall, I think that's a pretty good weekend worth of work on the plane. And with that, I'm going to shut that heater down. Go home, take one more look at that beautiful, sleek-looking little plane. And uh, hopefully next weekend we get this uh, stuck into the plane and uh, maybe some lights will work. BD5 Pilots Alpha now. You all have a great week. Don't forget to hit that like button. I appreciate all your support.